Um, our number one rule on defense, I only have two, so it won't take long. Number one rule is don't think, okay? Number two, don't suck. That's it, okay? They're the only two rules that our boys live by. Um, and our goal, basically, defensively, is just that. I feel a kid cannot play his fastest until he is comfortable and not thinking. I'm not going to teach my linebackers, D-backs, D-linemen to become robots. Um, I feel, you know, you're always telling those kids to spread out of the zone. Well, they're just going to a spot, okay? All right, Coach Rick is going to find out how to get around that spot, and he's going to get somebody to catch the ball or run by you, uh, and that is how I feel. Um, you know, my philosophy is always we're, we're trying to build champions in every, everything that we do here in Caledonia. Um, when I took over five years ago as head coach, of, you know, 2009, we lost in the section championship um, to a team that came and punched us in the mouth uh, with WEM. And that walking off that field that night was, you know, we've been on a pretty good winning streak, won some cha state championships for two years. And Carl said that he was done. I, his son Isaac was, just got done playing. <coughs> the was going up to uh, um, play at Rochester at that year and then to um, U of M. And as he walked off that field, I felt that the California football program was actually going to just drop. You know, without Coach Frickie on board, I was, I was really worried where we were at. And I always remember my coach at Rochester, the late uh, Dr. Joel Squisher, I want to remember him today, that he always quoted that those who stay will be champions. Well, we, we had a meeting. Actually, nobody wanted the head coaching job out of all our staff members. Nobody was really coming forward. So I didn't know if it was right for me, but I took it and I've been very blessed uh, throughout. I'm going to just show you guys a quick little four minute video. Um, I know we've got a lot of Wisconsin schools here that maybe don't get to see what California football is like. Um, we'll get the morning cranked up here with a, a little bit of a football video. As long as we pull it up, it came up five minutes ago. Um, Get the juices flowing a little bit, I can never watch enough film. Um, what I'm going to go over first is basically our linebacker. <coughs> um, 2007, Coach Fricke, we just got done winning a state championship by a point, I believe. And the one thing I think our program does the best is we are never satisfied. There's always something to learn. We are never going to learn it all. All right, somebody is always out to find something bigger and better. We went out to call Coach uh, Dale Vasquez. He's a speed uh, and football movement guy out from California. Um, how many guys in here have ever heard of him? Okay, just the Lewiston guys. He's a world-renowned guy. Like I said, we got uh, Isaac Frickey um, from the Gophers getting ready for his pro day. He's going to spend a month out there with him. And we have him come in one time a, a year and hire him to come in and teach them these drills and speed movement to our guys. The thing that we really are working on and focused on is everybody thinks it's all in the legs. For us, um, everything with our speed is a lot of 90 degrees locked, thumbs down, fingers, and, uh, and our shoulders, and everything is on this shoulder rotation. What that does, we've basically thrown out karaoke, dot drills, ladders, and we just get rid of it. And what we've done now is like I was talking about, I don't want my guys to be robots. They're not going to be looking at a dot wondering where to go, because you never know where that offensive player coming at us is. Um, these are some guys that you're going to see some ugly, this is not our best video, okay? I grabbed um, about 15 people that showed up for a speed workout at 6 o'clock in the morning here two weeks ago, and uh, this was our running back from last year, um, didn't actually play even defense for me, but what we do is we have all our positions work on these. D linemen, you're going to see a couple of girls in here maybe at the end of the video that play volleyball, and all these student athletes are working on drills, making themselves overall better athletes. Point I want to make on this one is just our mental focus. Devin is always working on running the drill through his head. It makes our guys stay in line, be ready to focus up, lock their shoulders. What we're looking for is a continuous, um, continuous shoulder rotation as they're going through the drill. This is a defensive end for us for next year. And this will be a sophomore running back right now. If you guys have any questions throughout this, feel free to, free to just holler them out.
<clears throat> what we're looking for here is this plant on the second cone. All right, we're really looking at making sure that we get our knee over over our strike. It's called, and you know, like I said, this is these guys are just getting back into this. Um, making sure we're keeping continuous shoulder rotation. Uh, also, making sure that we're working on our stance. I can't get the video in there very good. We're always shooting from the holsters. Um, basically getting our 90 degrees, and that's right there. So that we're ready to come out with our hands, explode, go into any direction that we want, and that can have a consistent shoulder throughout the drill. The thing a lot of kids don't do when they run is they do not relax, their, relax enough, which sounds <coughs> You want to make sure your, your kids are relaxed in the face, not all tense, they're all worried and locked up. They got to relax a little bit. Um, we definitely need a more arm angle. And a lot of our kids, when they're back, I'll uh, get into this when we go into the defensive back drill, is concentrate on what we call our arm carrier, where our shoulder rotation is, where we just angle our arms in. And what that helps us do as we're backpedaling, once we burst out into a lateral movement, they're able to they're able to explode into it faster. You can tell most of these guys are not basketball players because our shuffling sucks. Okay? We're really focused on the heel to toe. Um, I like this as a middle linebacker drill. You're going, you step the wrong way, you're coming around. I like that basketball arch. It's kind of what I always talk about out on the football field. We're coming out, we're coming in, we're coming downhill. It's fun when you start seeing these drills um, come out on the field. I believe this was the drill. I, I thought Devin didn't do too bad. A lot of our kids do a terrible job of finishing this drill. What we're looking at on that last cone is to make sure that we got a quick shoulder. Okay? When they turn and they're in that shuffle, that read step, boom, they're turning that switch. And what I've learned over the years, watching, uh, I'm trying to implement into our uh, prep school where I send my kids right now. The FIAD programs, and if any of our FIAD coaches, it's killing us to have these guys run 12 minute laps, okay, and jocks. Because what it's doing, it's teaching your brain, all right, to be slow, okay? What we're doing with our kids on that mental game is making that, that brain turn to this shoulder, which is going to drive our legs, which Coach Hodges will get into here after a while. So as you're, as you're watching this, kind of start thinking about that kind of thing, and get outside your box. It took me, honestly, for three years when Coach Basquette came, I tried being the devil's advocate, okay? And when I take it over, it's like, is this just some guy from California, you know, wondering what we're doing, you know, or I'm wondering what's he doing? Is this just a gimmick, you know, kind of his way to make a buck? And once you understand the science of it and what he's doing, and you see that light bulb, it's almost like a piece of candy that your brain feeds off of. Okay, on this last drill, when our kids are running, um, we're doing that heel to toe shuffle, and what we're doing is we're running laterally. Um, Ryan Pitts, like number 32 that I showed you on the video earlier, that kid could, run, kid could run faster sideways than a lot of kids, and maybe Lewiston can attribute to, you know, they've seen him on the field live. He is very hard to catch. When he wants to step, plant, and break, he's, he's gonna go wherever he wants to go. But he was a kid also that all through the winter, you know, for two, three, four years, he was in there, and he treated that like a religion, okay? And that's what you gotta get your kids to buy in. We've had coaches come, and if you're gonna come and look at these kind of things and, and do them a couple times, it's not gonna work for you, okay? I got a bunch of fourth grade and seventh and eighth grade girls right now doing this, and they look awful, all right? I, these guys here, um, if I would've done the whole video of all the kids we got in the line here, you know, we're not where we're gonna be come summertime. So as he sh these kids are shuffling, look, focus on the shoulder rotation. Notice how 
Their chest and their hips are supposed to be square to the camera here. Mitchell Schmitz, he's going to be one of our middle linebackers again next year. He's a junior, going to be a senior this year. So that's just a few things um, on that. You know, like I was talking about, making, uh, making athletes out of kids that most people would have quit on a long time ago. I've got a kid right here that in the blue, he's 6'5". Two years ago, I wanted to give him two cents for that kid. All I seen him do when he'd sit and warm up, he'd have his legs crossed, and all I could tell is he sat and played Nintendo every single day of the week. And what he has done, you know, we do a great job, I think, of our older guys grooming our younger guys, bringing them along, okay? What we do on a Saturday morning for our youth football, uh, Caledonia, actually, Carl kind of started that around the area. But for some reason, we don't really get into any of the Pop Warner leagues anywhere. But we have, our kids do on Saturday morning, our seniors go, and we have them come in after a game, you know, lift, get the acid out of them, and they watch film, and then they go teach our younger kids for an hour and a half, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, any first graders that want to come out. And we have those kids come out and teach those young kids so that they are bought in. Friday nights, the fun thing is we let them kids go play at halftime, and you know they get their 20 minutes with their pads on or playing touch football, and they're out there under the big lights, and they get to be a part of the big game and the big halftime show. So that's something that we do, and because we haven't quit on kids like this, you know he's not going to be maybe a phenomenal D1 athlete, but he's going to be all we got, and we have to turn him into an athlete, and, and he's getting there. I've got little, I've got little youth, uh, youth wrestler guys that happen to show up at six o'clock. They live down the street. Um, basketball players coming in during the morning. Both of those kids. I've got a kid that's not out for any sports. That you know, he's just going nuts to, and hungry. For our defensive back drills, what I've done last year was the first year that I really implemented this and changed this completely. Um, three years ago, I put in a lot of these defensive back drills. And in our defense, we play a lot of cover three, and basically turns into cover one instantly. Um, we, you know, we've got it all in four, three, three, five, three, four. I think they're all the same, personally. Or at least I try to coach them that way. And what we've done is have our outside linebackers, D line, D ends, um, D backs. I have all them guys do these drills because it's doing what? It's making them a better football player. If you can have more better football, you know, more football players that are better overall, you're going to win more football games, in my opinion back on this one one more time. I was pretty impressed with these two girls. She was actually our best backpedaler. I might have to sign her up for safety, I think. Um, what we're focusing on when we when I got these guys backpedaling, this was the worst looking drill out of any D-backs in here. When we're uh, backpedaling, our guys are locked, you know, chest over knees, everybody stands. But what I'm working on when I'm backpedaling is that arm carry rotation where our arms are just angled in. So that as we sprint uh, going on the flats, and that'll be on this next drill, basically what we're doing is we're able to lock our shoulders, and that continuous motion keeps our feet driving. Okay? There's no slipping, there's no stopping if we're doing things correctly. For this drill, I've probably played this a couple times. I think this is one of my favorite drills for outside linebackers. Um, everybody watch the left foot. Those two are good. Now watch Z. What we're working on is getting that foot to turn the inside. And how many kids don't you have when they're going on the flats? You see this. You see that foot dragging. Okay. What we're teaching our kids to do is get that foot turned and boom. Their shoulders are rotating. I want to play that one one more time. Probably my favorite outside linebacker drill to do. That one does it pretty good. And he didn't even play defense for us. But he did the drills every day. Vince, he was a starting middle linebacker for us this year. Now Zeke, he's a DN, he don't ever do it. But I do have our DNs covering the flats at times. <coughs> I'm also gonna point out our last guy, and I don't know if I can, can pause it or not on him, Everybody see how he just tipped over when he went out. Ben's a pretty powerful young man. He's, he worked hard, and basically he had too much torque in his shoulders, lost his planning, and actually tipped over. 
Okay, he actually got out of control, so that, that shoulder rotation actually forced him to get it, go over. So that's the body control that that teaches, and I thought that was just a, a good point to show you on that. thought we did we did okay on this um, one thing you can look Mitch is one that and I can't quite get him fixed but we'll say is they're getting long when they're when they're coming out you're watching the, the Zeke here is the same way he has rotation he gets really long okay when you're in short space as a D-back we want to keep that shoulder rotation short okay so you know none of those guys are defensive backs See, we want to keep continuous shoulder rotation throughout the drill. Basically sprinting, we want them based up in a good stance. Which I'm going to jack them up the next time we go here because they're not doing a very good job. And that's what's great about this. I really enjoyed actually producing this little quick video because going through that camera's eye, or you know, you got an iPad or whatever, I'm not a technology guy whatsoever, but you can really focus in and, and see um, the mistakes that the kids are making through the camera lens. As they switch into that, what I'd like to see out of this is more of that arm carry rotation. And another thing I'm always looking for, when our guys are sprinting, I shouldn't see their heads going like this. Okay? I like that even mechanical. You know what? It kind of bugged me, and I can't pick on the Gophers D-back coach. I hope he's not in here. But I went up and watched them, of course, a few times with Isaac being up there. And I see them guys, and what they're doing is they're, they're breaking and they're pounding the bongos, basically, as quick as they can. And it's just driving. Mean, their D-backs are playing phenomenal. I mean, they're, you'll get the kids that, you know, you watch a world-class sprinter. A lot of times, they, their shoulder rotation looks like that. And what I see them guys doing is they're just pounding the ground on that. My philosophy is to turn our shoulder rotation as quick as possible for our defensive backs to get them to break as quick as possible. By all means, I don't have the world's greatest defensive backs. It's got kids that work hard and get to be ball hawks. This is one of my second favorite drills for all sports. Basically what we're doing here, you know, you got a corner, And he's basically lined up on the wide out. That guy's beat him to the inside, faked him out, and he's beat. There's no way his hips are pinned. What I'm teaching my guys to do is come around the basketball arch, and no matter what, wherever, whatever route that guy runs, unless maybe a close corner or something like that, he is going to come out and rotate, and he's going to be on top of it. Okay? So wherever that guy goes, he's going to come around that arch, and he's going to be on top of that receiver. He may still catch the ball, but he's not going to get a touchdown as long as we make, make the tackle. I'm going to rewind that one again. So no matter where that receiver would go, he's going to, he's going to match it. So if he's running a post, a dig, he's going to come out on top. Okay? If, if he would come out and he would break out, as he comes around, he's going to hit the brakes, boom. He's going to turn his shoulders and he's going to cut back over the top on a, on a flag drop. So we actually are practicing getting beat here, which is going to happen in all, in all sports. I love this. Uh, one of our middle linebackers from last year that's a guard for us, he says he uses this on the basketball court almost every game at some point. Thank you. 
This drill we did not work on quite as much as I'd like, and uh, mainly because it's at the end of the sheet. And I know how it is as coaches, you don't find as much time in practice as you would like. But I really like this. You can really see how our guys are leaning and staying at full speed. Okay, that's that line and just that little lean as you're coming around our speed curves, which is another part of our, our speed, more, uh, speed drills that we do, uh, is, is very beneficial. Any drills anybody would like to see again? Um, any questions on any of them? Do you have these available? Um, I do, I've got, a, this is basically what I get. This is what Coach Basquet, I got a whole bunch of lines drawn up. I'm sure sit down with you afterwards and, you know, I'll sure print them or I can scan them and email them to you. To you if you give me your email address and, and show you how to do that. You know, you basically got to research speed. You know, Coach Frickty, he, he's the speed Nazi at, our, at Caledonia. These guys are the strength. I'm kind of the psychology guy that brings the whole mold together, I hope, and defensively tries to X and O and stop everybody. So that's kind of, you know, our, our triangle that we've created in Caledonia. And of course, I got great assistants all over the place that, have, that uh, just keep plugging in and try to 90. 5% of them are former Caledonia football players. So it's really an in-house atmosphere. Um, any other questions? <coughs>